I don't think that, that, that cinema and films should be blaming anything, should be condemning the political or social situation or exposing it in any way. I think that it's important to find stories which are relevant, relevant for a specific period, for a specific age. Um, and in a way it is the case with these two films of mine. Uh, but uh, the topic of the films isn't precisely the social situation of the country in a given moment. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is to find uh, particular situations in which some people find themselves that would also speak about the general context of that moment in that country. But as you are saying, indeed, the films maybe speak about a crisis which is a bit more general. It's a crisis which is visible outside, but which comes from inside, in a way. What are the reasons for this crisis? It's difficult to say, and it's not for a film to analyze. As you know, you know, uh, you have a very limited amount of time in a film to do a lot of things. And the most important thing for me is to be truthful to the characters and to the situations. Um, in four months, for example, it's true that um, <coughs> it's a private situation in which somebody has to test his own values about life and make some choices which are important. And it's true that the context plays a major role, but the film finally, it's not directly about the communist society. If you want, it's about the side effects of a system which was very manipulative, a system that was really following people very closely. But um, I think it's difficult to, to say that only or mostly the politicians or the church are to be blamed for the present situations. I think that education, in a more general sense, plays a role. But you know, there are several factors contributing to education. Mm -hmm. Each of us, you know, we all have a responsibility because we are the parents of some children that we educate. We are the result of the education that our parents gave to us. Mm -hmm. And it's a context in which I don't know, the, the, the reactions of the society to what happens, the personal education and the school lead to the way people are today. What I wanted to speak a little bit about in, in uh, Beyond the Hills is that, especially in, in places that claim to be, and communities that claim to be very Christian, this kind of solidarity that we are expected from a Christian education is not very visible. It's very difficult to, to define religion and I think it's very difficult to, um, to say that it's, it's either prism or freedom. It depends on the person, it depends on your standpoint. Um, I think that for, you know, characters with very little hopes in life, like these characters that I was talking about, it could represent the best of their choices at the age of 19 because there's something, there's something important about religion and about that community. It brings affection. If these girls miss something, they miss a family, they miss affection. We speak about children that were left behind in these institutions that didn't have parents. So you have to understand that it's more difficult and there's a comfort coming with belonging to somebody, to some, to some religion, to an idea that you know, make some order into your life. Uh, but at the same time, um, it's difficult to make personal choices once you enter this way and you take this way. But this is just a personal choice. So it's, I think it's very difficult to say, the film was trying more to speak about how relative good and evil can be. Yes. All persons are good, have good intentions. Um, but this they is. They all have good intentions. They all have good intentions. Young priests, um, girls, families. If you see the if you see the film from a religious standpoint, you will see that this is something that they fear about. That you can have a lot of good intentions, but you never know 
who is behind your good intentions? This is one of the problems that religious people have. You never know if your intentions come from the good side or from the bad side. And this is something they have to figure out. This is the education that they, they get about good, bad, about evil, and about God. And But what I was... You know, the, the discussion there is a little bit more, more complex. It's also about the society. And it balances... It balances this lack of attitude and of empathy mm -hmm. of the everyday society and their attitude. Mm -hmm. They might be wrong with what they do by the end, but at least um, they try to help from the beginning and to be there for this girl. It is easier for me to say why communism failed to, to pass moral values. First of all, because it didn't really have a lot of moral values to pass. It had a lot of uh, artificial values, if you want it, which are very theoretical and they sound wonderful, but uh, on the field they didn't work. It's one thing to, to try and apply or to be part of these uh, beautiful theoretical ideals of equality, and it's a very different, different thing to try and um, place them in everyday life. And, uh, you know, this is one of the things that we know quite well and that, uh, you know, lived communism didn't have to do at all with uh, theoretical ideas of communism. So, and it's mostly about propaganda, it's mostly about uh, an ideology that would serve a small group of people uh, that idea about uh, the people ruling and share, er, sharing everything, you know, worked on paper but didn't work on the field. And little by little, you know, there was a parallel reality that took over the reality. As you know, probably in the last 10 or 15 years of communism, mostly in Romania, but in most of the communist countries, what you could read in the press or you can see on television was uh, Orwell 1984. It was an invented reality. It didn't have anything to do with the reality in the country. So by the end of this, it was clear for everybody living that um, the truth is somewhere else. It's not in what they say. And therefore you can't really talk about moral values. While for the religion there's something else, you know, after 50 years in which religion was tolerated but not encouraged, people needed some values to replace the fake values of communism and which where never worked. did they find these values? Well, for, for very many people they, they were looking for these values in religion. Mm -hmm. it, and you know, it's not so much about the, the, the ancient values of Christianity, it's mostly about the rituals. The rituals the ritual, yeah. bring you a lot of comfort. Yeah. So. What, you know what, another thing that I really wanted to speak about in this mm -hmm. second film that we are talking about mm -hmm. is that rituals took the place of the Christian values. Christian values are part of a very good education. Mm -hmm. They can give you some basic values about solidarity with the others and a lot of things. While, you know, rituals are <coughs> just habits. They don't add a lot of values. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that you know the others, if you go to the church, you won't harm them and stuff like this. But if you stay only on this level, you stay on the surface. And you can be very easily the, the target of a lot of superstitions. Because this mix a lot. You know, rituals and superstitions mix a lot. And yes. superstitions doesn't have much to do with religion and with belief. And a lot of crimes happen uh, in the name of the God, I think there is. <laughs> a lot of crimes happen anyway. And some of them are made in the name of God, it's true, but some the of them are of Stalin, the name of God, made the name in the name of whatever ideas. Whatever, yes. If you want, at the end, the film also brings this as a possible topic of conversation, that in the name of the greatest ideals of this world, a lot of crimes have been made. Individual crimes or mass crimes. So... So in a way we have to reinvent moral values and in which way we can do this? Believe in ourselves, in the society, in what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's difficult to say what we have to do today to, 
reinvent our values, but I think that it's always... What are the values? The values sometimes... I'm not sure that it's very easy to reinvent that. What, what are, if you want, you know, what are the values of the present days? There are, some of them are very superficial. I think that it's important to make sure that as part of, of the education that children are having, they get back to some basic values because you know the basic values never changed yes. the only thing is that the attention that we give to them changed today and we got lost in a lot of details yes. we got lost as adults in a lot of details and the education of the children got lost in a lot of information yes. and it's not about information it's about what what you do with this information culture has nothing to do with information i think it's Something ideally more deep ideally culture should help you to use this information based on some moral values and principles that you need to have from home and from some other institutions mm. if you are a religious person and you get these values from the church very well if not and you don't believe in in, in church and you get them from school even better okay. if you get them from mm. From your parents it's the same thing through cinema we have a very small influence for example what we are doing small now yes. well yes mm -hmm. we have to admit that we have a small influence just imagine what is the the impact of what we are doing because the, the kind of cinema that we are doing includes a little bit of this education if you want it's not a it's not a direct education it's not a preach because then it's didactic and cinema should stay in art and not become this kind of education but it encourages people to do something and this is something that we can do with cinema it encourages them to look for these values and to think with their own minds and make their own decisions for me the screenplay is probably the most important part of the preparation of the film. In all the films that I made so far, I discovered that you can ruin the film when shooting, but you can't fix it unless the screenplay was good. So I really passed a lot of time trying to think about this plan, which is the screenplay. For me, it's more than a plan. Writing the screenplay is not so complicated, but understanding what you are talking about, this is complicated. And I think that what an initiative like this one can do good for the participants, it can help them clarify their ideas. The screenplay is not a story with situations. The screenplay, you know, cinema has this problem. It needs to speak about something. It's not important to just shoot a piece of reality and quote a piece of reality and hope this is cinema. It's not like this. Even cinema, which is very close to realism, it needs to make sense. This is your position of a spectator when you sit on a chair. You see some situations and you're looking for the sense of these situations. So, as a writer, you need to understand what your situations speak about. This is something that you need to clarify when you write a screenplay. Once you clarify this, everything will fall into place into the screenplay. Unless you clarify this, you won't be able to handle this kind of freedom that you're having as a writer. You are clueless. You don't know in which direction your screenplay is going. So, I've, I've never been to a process like this, but my feeling is that it, it always helps to talk to somebody. If you talk to somebody, you will tell him the story. You are forced to reduce it to what works into words. When you put it into words, um, you have the synthesis of what you want to say so it helps a lot being verbal about what you want to do my feeling is that meeting the right person in an environment like this might help you clarify your ideas and getting closer to what you want to say finally it's your film it's not possible to make your film with the imagination of somebody else but somebody else can help you clarify your own ideas You know, screenplays are, are, are a very complex enterprise and this is why it's difficult to write a good screenplay because the screenplay is not just a story. It's not just a story. No, ideally, ideally, a screenplay should 
present a filmmaker's position about life and about his art. Exactly. If you get there. So, first of all, you need to have an opinion about this, which can be visible in the screenplay. You need to think about cinema, you need to think about what is specific for cinema. You need to understand the possibilities and the tools of your art. And then you need to make sure that you have something to say. For this, is not, it's not enough to be a good craft, craftsman. No, no. You need to be a complex person. Yes, you need to have some to culture, to, be, to observe life, to, to have the pleasure of telling stories about things that you've observed, to have something to say. There's something about writing. You can learn writing up to a certain point. Up after that point, is there's something that belongs to you. You, you, you know, there is no school for writers. You can't become you can't yes. become a writer. You can you know train yourself to be a writer if you are a storyteller. If you train yourself as a storyteller, as a young person that you know loves observing things and telling things, and later on you can develop and become a better storyteller. Yes. But you know things can be learned up to certain point. You know yes. unless you have a natural drive for observing things, for telling stories. It's going to be difficult. Oh, yeah. But of course, there are things you can learn, and little by little you can become better in being more focused about, about what you want to say. Mm -hmm. But keeping in mind all the time that cinema needs some freedom. If you are completely control freak, freak up to the end, you won't let in the film the things that might happen when you write or when you mm -hmm. shoot, because cinema is in a way, it's, it's an experience. You don't know where you will be at the end when you start. It's an experience. I don't believe too much in national cinema. What is national cinema at the end? The only thing that connects national cinema is the language. But apart from this, you can have you know, a Polish director then can be closer to a Turkish director and to a Mexican director, then you can have two Greek directors. So, I, I, I think this is easier for, for the press, for the audience to handle things, to market things, but I, I don't think that a Greek cinema, a, a Greek wave or a Romanian wave speak about an artistic manifest. Cinema is a very individual art with points of view which belong to every filmmaker and I think that creativity stops when you try to follow a pattern. What, what's important for us to try and do with cinema is to wake people up and mm. make them think about their own lives and their own choices. Personal freedom belongs to you. Do people want to wake up? Uh, I don't think people want to wake up. They want to um, sleep, or watch uh, stupid television and stay on the internet and enjoy and be entertained. This is what, what you know, I, I don't like about uh, what cinema became to be today. I don't have anything against entertainment, but it became just entertainment. I think that's 95% or maybe more of the cinema that people consume today is entertainment. So they, they got used to the idea that cinema is entertainment, which is not okay. Mm -hmm. We need to have a variety of choices, and we still need to use cinema a little bit closer to one of the purposes that it had at the beginning. To have it as a way of expressing yourself and making some other people understand themselves better and think about what you have to tell them. Think about themselves, think about the world surrounding them.